Good morning and welcome to Monday Morning Prayer. And this morning, I would like to dedicate our prayers here for all the children of God who are struggling with lethargy, low energy and asymptomatic viruses. So many of us are really struggling at the moment with tiredness. And the more people I speak to, like yesterday when we went to the Unitarian Chapel in Kendall, we were nearly all falling asleep for no reason whatsoever. So to mo this morning we light this light for the children of God who are battling some unseen forces. Obviously there's an energetic shift of consciousness. And we pray for one another gathered here and for all our friends on social media for all the members of our community past and present and we welcome our dear sister sue and jan who've logged in this morning good to welcome you to this time of prayer and now we ring our little bells and we call on the holy spirit of god with mother earth and all the great ascended masters and spiritual teachers of all faith traditions. And I've just been joined by our little monastic thief, Sid. Hello, Sid. <laughs> oh, bless him. So we begin with our beautiful prologue of our brother and sister is seen on Mount Sinai. Come here to me, stay put. Oh, bless him. We enter the eternal and infinite garden with reverence to the heavenly father, mother God, the earthly mother and all the great masters and reverence to the holy, pure and saving teaching and reverence to the brotherhood and sisterhood of the elect. Monday morning, we commune with the angel, not of water, but of life by saying angel of life, enter my limbs and give strength to my whole body. And as we say these words, we contemplate trees and we, as our, we feel ourselves absorbing the vital healing energy forces of the trees in the Creator's garden, excuse me, and embracing the healing life force energy of these amazing trees. So let us just be still as we come into the Creator's Cathedral, the landscape. And with each breath, let us breathe in the healing energies of God's creation and the beautiful trees. Amen. You stay there with Daddy, that's a good boy, and then I know you're up to no harm. <laughs> I'm guided this morning by spirit to read this beautiful reflection from Swami Vivekananda. No, don't bite my cord. That's a good boy. I shall go to the mosque of the Muslim. I shall enter the Christian church and kneel before the crucifix. I shall enter the Buddhist temple and take refuge in the Buddha. I shall keep my, sorry, I shall go into the forest and sit down in meditation with the Hindu, and in addition, I shall keep my heart open for all that may come in the future. Is God's book finished, or is revelation still going on? Salutations to all the prophets of the past, to all the great ones of the present, and to all who are to come in the future. And that's by Swami Vivekananda. There's someone having a great time on my right here, chewing my cord. <laughs> I pray I don't have to stand up. This morning I want to read from the beautiful hymn book. We sung some lovely hymns yesterday at the Unitarian Chapel, and you know I lost the marker, so I've forgotten which ones. Oi! God, he's a character. So this morning we're going to read... Sid... It's hymn number 10. Be that guide whom love sustains. Be that guide whom love sustains. Rise above the daily strife. Lift on high the good you find. Help to heal the hurts of life. Be that helper nothing daunts. Doubt a friend 
or taunt of foe. Ever strive for liberty, show the path that life should, should go. Be that builder, trusting good, bitter though the test may be. Through all ages they are right, though they build in agony. Be that teacher faith directs, move beyond the old frontier, though the frightened fear that faith be tomorrow's pioneer. Isn't that lovely? So now we're guided this morning to read from Jesus Now by Leslie Brandt. And the theme of our reflection this morning is he is seeking for you. And he guides us to the Christian New Testament Bible to read in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, verse 9b. The kingdom of God has come near to you. The kingdom of God has come near to you. You say you are seeking for God. It is strange that you have not found him. He has been near to you. He is near to you. Indeed, he has been seeking for you. Perhaps you've been looking for him in the wrong places. You expect to find him at the end of some religious pilgrimage, in some holy temple, in a picture, a book, a vision or a dream. Maybe you are not seeking for God at all, but for a happy feeling, an ecstatic experience, something that will numb you to the sufferings and the atrocities of this cruel world. You might even settle for a bit of magic, a smattering of security, a miracle or two. Unless the spirit of darkness succeeds in stifling your inner spirit with the ephemeral delights of this passing world, you will continue to seek for God or to yearn for him even until he finds you. He is the fulfillment of your deepest needs. You were made by him and for him. You will not find true joy or peace unless you return to him, unless you allow him to find you. Those words are so prophetic because so many who approach the Teo community to join us as monastics, they have that insatiable longing in the very depth of their heart. They've tried various alternatives which haven't satisfied that internal longing for Christ. Yesterday, while we were finishing the beautiful service at uh, the Unitarian Chapel in Kendal, founded in 1720, the original building, the Lady Fran did the most amazing service using slides, taking you on a journey through the woods and meeting all of God's little creatures that are sacrificed in the name of love. And she tried to create a balance of how the divine seeks us out to respect this earth and ourselves. And it was so powerful. In fact, I thought, wow, this is so Franciscan embracing the little animals and stopping the atrocities that we commit against them for the perfume industry and the cosmetic industry and the little helpless faces. It was so destroying that man can do such heinous things to God's little creatures. There was a little pussycat and you could see the tear running down its eye behind the cage and a little baby monkey and there was a beautiful rabbit, it must have been an Angora rabbit, that was completely bald, where they were trying out various skin preparations. And I thought, Lord, where have we gone wrong? Where are we going wrong? Why are so many searching for you and not finding you? Because often we put blocks in the way of God, our own blocks. And though many are wanting to join the community, we find that they haven't got the commitment. It's, it's, a, it's more like an emotional roller coaster of feeling good. Being a monk, I tell you, is not about feeling good. 
it's a day-to-day -day struggle it, with your, as you grow older with your aches and pains. But to make that commitment to Christ is a life commitment. <clears throat> and we do it in the good times and the bad times. We do it when we're feeling below par as well as when we're feeling good. But to be a follower of Christ and surrender your heart to his love, for me, is like winning the lottery. Because he provides for your every need, even when you're down to your last dime or penny. And that's the beauty of the sevenfold vows of the ascending peace, providence, that the Lord will provide for you, no matter how strapped you are, as long as you're in service to love, and you've surrendered to God's love, then you know that our Father, Mother, God will endorse your needs, not your wants, sadly, but your needs will always be met. And I can vouchsafe for that since 2010, when I took my final vows of enclosure and took the vow of providence, I've had my every need met, even to a coffee cake made for me left on the freezer in the in the old garage, it's now the kitchen, because I sold the last six eggs to this lovely lady who wanted to make some omelets for her children. And I thought, oh shucks, I can't make a coffee cake now, which I love. But when I went into the garage the following morning, there was this cake tin and I thought, I don't remember that. And inside it, it had a little gift for you from above the most beautiful coffee cake. So I know it's not an amazing miracle, but it just shows you that our Father, Mother, God, if you're willing to put yourself out for others in his name, he will overwhelm you as he does me every day. He overwhelms you with his love and he does take care of us. But are we willing to trust him? Are we willing to listen to him? Well, let us listen to him now as he speaks to us from one of his beautiful channelings to Sarah Young in this little book called Jesus Calling. And I'm going to ask Holy Spirit to choose a reading because they are all beautiful, but to choose one for all of us here this morning. Oh, my word, grow strong in your weakness. Some of my children I've gifted with abundant strength and stamina. Others like you have received the humble gift of frailty. Your fragility is not a punishment, nor does it indicate a lack of faith. On the contrary, weak ones like you must live by faith, depending on me to get you through the day. I am developing your ability to trust in me to lean on me rather than on your own understanding. Your natural preference is to plan out your day knowing what will happen when my preferences, sorry, will happen when and where. My preference is for you to depend on me continually, trusting me to guide you and strengthen you as needed. This is how you grow strong in your weakness. Oh Lord, thank you for speaking to my heart after the night I had last night where I really struggled in pain and where I was fighting for my breath. Thank you, Lord, for blessing each one of us here and for filling your promise to us that when we call on you, you will never ever abandon us as I know you've never abandoned Jan or Sue. You've always been there for them through thick and thin. And we thank you for their faith, for their courage, and for their love. Bless them both today, Lord. We come now to our morning intercessions where we bring one another, where we bring the whole family of God, especially brothers and sisters who've surrendered their heart to the light to God, the God of many names and none, who are battle-weary, who are so lethargic, lacking in energy and strength. And many are sharing that there is an energetic shift in our consciousness 
where there's a duality of light and dark at play. And all we can do is trust in our higher power. Trust in the Lord Christ with Archangel Michael to protect us. Because many are called into service to God, but only a few stay. Because it's so easy to throw the towel in when the going gets tough. So this morning we remember all the members of our community, past and present. And we give thanks for an answer to prayer for dear brother Brian, who emailed me yesterday, as did sister Jackie, where we were both concerned for our dear brother, because he's had more than his fair share of disappointment with his truck and the extortionate expense. My God, you could buy a house for what he's paying for his repairs on a three-year-old truck, but he needs it because it's his life. But the Lord answered prayer for Brian and came to his rescue. But we pray for our members and dear friends who are struggling, for Sarah, who's only in her early 40s, who's got metastatic, metastatic cancer where it's riddled in her bones and pelvis and tr the tumor is trapped on, trapping her sciatic nerve, leaving her in excruciating pain. So we hold dear Sarah, who's a dear friend and a friend of Elsie, we pray for our dear Heather, Sister Heather from our community, who's being investigated to exclude leukemia. What a beautiful soul is little Heather. Some of you may remember Heather. She's only tiny, a retired former midwife from Liverpool. We pray for our friend Donna, who's a great support to her, who also works at the hospice. We pray this morning for all those who've asked for prayer. And we present this book of requests to our Father, Mother, God, and we say, Lord, too many to mention, but you know who they are. Thank you for touching each and every one of them. But we remember today our dear Franciscan sister Corazon de los Santos in Winnipeg in Canada. We also remember, especially today, are two new sisters who are joining us. That's Sister Donna, who's now in Oregon, and Sister Laurie, is it Laurie or Lorne, Lorna? Do you know I can't get my head around these names? Who's in Oklahoma, I believe. So we pray for them, that the Lord who guided them, that we will do all that we can to nurture their vocation with Christ's help. But we pray today for Paul and his son, Ben. We pray for all our religious leaders, especially Pope Francis, for His Holiness the Dalai Lama, Thich Nhat and Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth, our reigning monarch and head of the Church of England. With Jan, we pray for all gathered here, for peace without and peace within. And we pray for all our amazing pets and for those who are cruel to God's little creatures. We pray that they will see the error of their ways and be kind to God's little creatures. And for those who are struggling in our hospices and hospitals, in our care centers, those who've got dementia or confusion, for our young people, the young people that Jan is looking after, who have got various physical, emotional and psychological needs and who are given great care from a family who love them. But there are many who don't have that love. So let us now be still for a moment and bring our own requests to our Father, Mother, God by naming, blessing and releasing them and leaving them with God. So we do that now. And finally, we share with you the Lord's Prayer. And this is one that I have read before, but it's rather different. So just bear with me. The, our God, you are everywhere, infinite and eternal, unknowable. Yet we call upon you and give you a sacred name. Your will brings everything into being, the multiverse and all dimensions. And it is be, by your grace 
that we live. You see us as whole and perfect. We pray that we learn forgiveness so that we can see others as whole and perfect too. Guide us to understand that wealth and power are illusions. And as we dwell in the world of duality, let us discern and eschew evil, for you are beyond duality. You are our only reality, now and forever. Amen. And our prayer this morning, bear with me. We pray from the heart. O Father, Mother God, the God of many names and none, you have called us here by name. You have created each one of us in love. You have carved us on the palm of your hand. And now we surrender to your heart. All that we are and all that you want us to be. Empower us this day to be your hands and feet and beating heart in a world that is a beautiful place we call the Cathedral of God, but a world where many of your children don't even know you, or those who do disregard you. Grant to each one of us here your blessing this day, in mind, in body and spirit. Amen. And the blessing of heaven, the blessing of earth, the blessing of sea and sky, on those we love this day and on every human family, the gift of heaven, the gift of earth, the gift of sea and sky, the gifts of brother sun and sister moon and the gifts of the animal kingdom be in your heart now and forever. Amen. And as I come to blow out this light, we ask the Lord Christ to bless each and every one of us here and all whom we have remembered in prayer. Amen. So go in peace to love and to serve our God, Goddess. Namaste. Shalom, inshallah, pax et bonum, om shanti, solo di caritas, salam alaikum. And may the peace of the divine reawaken in you today, the I am presence of God. And if this is your bedtime, sleep well. And for the rest of us, I pray you have a really good day, although here we are, the skies are grey, the rain is coming down, not too heavy, but we are told that we're going to have lots of rain today, so I am thankful because it waters God's garden. Amen. Take care and God bless you till we meet again around this table. <clears throat>